Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? Today I want to talk about the second part in our chattering discussion. Now in the first video where I showed you guys how to chatter whether you're using a chattering tool or not, I showed you guys how to make this pattern with the mud tools trim tool. I wanted to get that video out of the way first because a lot of people think you need a chattering tool in order to make chatter marks much like this. But instead, I showed you guys how to do it with the mud tools trim tool which technically isn't made for chattering and I also showed you how to do it with a regular old pear trim tool like this. These are two tools that are absolutely not meant for chattering but I still make chatter marks with them. And we also went over the basic steps which allow most people to chatter because chattering is kind of a misconception. A lot of the time you guys just see somebody put a trim tool to some clay and it just like magically chatters but realistically that video went over all the steps and even put some stuff into slow motion and perspective to show you what's really going on when you're chattering. But while I was making that video, I was like, well, I've been using trim tools my entire life in order to chatter because the way I was taught to chatter is not with chattering tools, which theoretically, when I do get a chattering tool, should make chattering this type of pattern all the more easier. So I immediately went online after that video and bought myself a pair of Shin's chattering tools in which just came in the mail today, actually. These are four of Shin's chattering tools which I bought from clayplanet.com. They don't cost that much and there's technically more than four of them, but I only bought four because some of them were duplicates, like some of them were meant for left-handed people and some of them were meant for right-handed people. But I'm born right-handed so I didn't buy the left-handed one. There was about nine of these tools placed on the Clay Planet website and I bought numbers one, three, four, and five. I picked these four specifically because a lot of them were just kind of duplicates of the ones that were already there. For example, this one is a blade pointing this way, right? Well, they also had the same exact one that was like number eight with the blade pointing that way. I imagine that's just for left and right handed people. So there's a good set of them I didn't buy. And there's also a good set of them that I already had tools to. For example, I already have this shape one, so I don't really need to buy a duplicate of that. Each one of these ran me about 16 or $17 plus shipping. I didn't have to pay individual shipping because they all came in one tiny little box. So in today's video, we're gonna take these shin chattering tools and test them out on a bunch of different bowls we can chatter. But like, I, I would first need some bowls. Man, I really wish I knew, my, I, 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 like, I wish I knew somebody who made bowls and like they were already trimmed and they were already done and like I wish somebody had prepped for this video. So that way I didn't have to show you guys me going through the super easy already made videos about it step what am I of going do? through a boom. You already know I made these. Haven't you seen a cooking show before? I already made these before we started recording. Don't you don't you play with me. Which one are we gonna use first? You know what? Let's use the rectangle one first. Because the rectangle one is as close as it can get to the mud tools trim tool one. I'm pretty sure this is number one on the list of tools on Clay Planet, in case anyone's thinking about buying these as well for themselves. Now if any of you remember my last video on chattering, the main thing that helps with chattering is the bounceability, which is what we're going to call it now. Don't, don't you, don't you at me. Now if you guys remember the last video in which I showed you guys how to actually go through the steps of chattering, regardless of whether you're using a chattering tool or a trimming tool, you'll probably notice that there's a little bit of a difference in the tools. The shin tool is a little bit lighter when you get your hands on it, which means it's probably going to bounce a little bit easier than the mud tools trim tool. This is awesome because the thing that actively makes chattering is the bouncing of the tool. You guys remember that shot I gave you in slow motion with this tool bouncing on the clay body? Well, that's going to be a little bit easier now because number one, this has a much easier curve and it's a little bit lighter. I can technically bend this a little bit if I felt like it, but the mud tools trim tool is made out of like black carbon tungsten. I can't, I can't really bend it, right? So this is going to be much easier to bounce. It's probably going to be way easier to chatter with as well. And I'm also pretty sure I just cut myself on this tool and that's how sharp it is. Thank you. 
you can really see where the tool dug into the clay body. I would personally suggest going a little bit faster with this tool, and I know that I only use this angle, and technically speaking, we can also use this angle to make some longer strokes, but I would say in between this number one chattering tool and the mud tools trim tool, these look a little bit similar. I would prefer this one, to be honest with you, over this one, but they're not so different that you can like, oh, this one's clearly better, you know? So let's move on to tool number three. Tool number three is the tapered chattering tool. Now this one is probably primarily meant to use this tip right here. It looks like you can use the side, but I really want to see what the tip does because, you know, chattering tools are meant to be used with their tips like this. Although I assume that this is just going to make a bunch of little polka dots. So let's see what the number three trim tool does. <laughs> okay, check that out. I mean, it pretty much really is just a bunch of little dots when you look at it. And that's exactly what I thought this tool would make. Um, I don't think I like this one too much because this kind of just looks like I put a bunch of little dots in here Although I know that my aesthetic isn't everybody's so it's not like it's the tool's fault But this is really just a bunch of little polka dots It, it kind of looks like somebody did this with a Steve's tool. So let's go see what tool number four has for us Tool number four is the oval trim tool, and it looks just like this. It looks looks kind of like a tiny balloon. I'm really interested on in seeing what the sides do, but I kind of want this to be a very fluid video. So we're just going to keep on using the top here, see what that does. Okay, number four is not too bad. I would say it looks kind of like number three, but it makes deeper little circle marks instead of just these tiny, tiny upper layer ones. And I kind of don't like the upper layer ones, so I would definitely pick this one over number three. I'm really attached to number one right now, and that's because while I'm using these, I noticed that these take a little bit of finesse to use. You really have to stick to those rules that I gave you in the previous chattering tool to use these type. But the one that was rectangular, or the square one, was just, as soon as I put it on there, it immediately started bouncing. And I think it's because it has such hard angles. So this is the kind of texture that tool number four made. And you know, I'm digging it. It's not bad whatsoever. Now this is the one that I've been waiting for the curve tool. Really interested in this one because it's supposed to be used like this. You're not really supposed to use it straight on like we've been using the other ones. So the blade is all the way right here on the right. There is a left-handed version for those of you who are left-handed out there who still want to chatter if you're looking for that on Clay Planet, which is really nice. I think that's cool of Shin to make a left and a right-handed one. He realizes they're out there. But for now, this is the right-handed one. Oh, I love this. I don't know if you can see it because the chattering lines are very, very thin, but I really like this tool. Um, I will say that it makes a weird sound. I'll play it back for you because usually I put music over the sound so that it doesn't annoy you. But this specific tool, or at least the sharper tools, don't make that drumming noise, that type of farting noise that I had named before in the last video. Instead, they kind of make this noise. <laughs> That's the noise that I'm hearing when I chatter with this specific tool. And it was also the noise that I was hearing when I was trying to chatter sideways with this tool. So if you're hearing it, this is the sound that these two tools make when you're doing it correctly. Of course, you might want your clay a little bit wetter than what I have it here. Right here, it's about leather to leather hard, but you might want yours leather to leather soft, and that'll make the job a little bit easier. 
But as far as this one goes, I love this one. Number five? Number five is definitely my aesthetic. To people who aren't used to chattering, this probably looks like nothing right now, but to people who understand and have made a final product with chattering, you're probably thinking about all the glaze combinations that this tiny texture would make. I actually like this one so much, I'm gonna do one more bowl with it so that I can make a set for the store. Yeah, I really like this tool. I do notice that I'm getting a little bit better each and every time I chatter with these tools. And so there's probably some people out there, such as Shin himself, that can make way better marks than this in the same product. But I think that just comes along with the fact that he made the tools. And secondly, this is my first time using these specific tools. So I'll probably get better over time using them. Thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. I really wanted to make a review on these just in case you guys were thinking about buying these for yourselves. And I know I only bought like four out of nine, but a lot of them were duplicates. For example, number three and four are kind of the same thing a little bit. Like one of them honestly just has a bit more of a rounded edge or a tapered edge. And you know, they essentially make almost the same pattern. I'm especially happy with numbers one and five over here just because this one's really easy to use. If you're a beginner and you're having a hard time chattering, this will definitely get you through that breaking point of chattering. This one's really easy to chatter with for some reason and I think it's because of how it's angled and how easy it is to bounce with it in comparison to the mud tools trim tool we used earlier. But this one over here is a little bit more difficult but man it makes really really satisfying chatter marks. But Dante, we want to see them on an end product. No, you can't see them on an end product. Because as soon as I make all of these blue, you're going to be like, well, now I want to see it on red. And then I got, like, it's like 15 different videos. If you just click subscribe, you'll see it sooner or later. Why, why you, why you, why are you always on me like that? But thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. If you want to see any of my artwork, the links are always down below. The Facebook fan page, the Instagram. Although we only did buy four out of nine of these, I still hope that this little review helped a lot of you. And honestly, to, to be real with you, I kind of just wanted an excuse to buy myself some shin chattering tools. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you, Dirty Potters, next week.